Okay, news coming in from that game. As expected, there are wholesale changes across both teams. We'll just have them up on our screens. England is coming up first. Eight changes for England. Only goalkeeper Jordan Pickford, John Stones and Ruben Loftus-Cheek remain from the team that thrashed Panama. 6-1. What do you make of that? Eight changes. The good thing is he's giving a lot of his fringe players a run out. So, uh, someone like a Trent Allen, Alexander-Arnold gets to start a game for England at a World Cup. That's great for the player personally. Yep, it's fantastic for him. You know, his story is quite incredible. We've seen many articles over the weeks leading up to the World Cup. Um, but there again, when you look at the team, you know, Phil Jones, Gary Cale, they're at big clubs, you know, they play. Used to play together as well for a while yeah. for England. Yeah, so, you know, that that's fine. Danny Rose, nice to see him come in. He's had a tough year at Spurs, but, you know, Gareth Southgate believed in him and brought him in. And uh, very interesting to see Rashford and Vardy mm -hmm. stretch in Belgium tonight. Okay, two teams who scored a lot of goals. Let's look at the Belgium lineup now, and they've gone one better than England because they've made nine changes where Derek Boyata and goalkeeper Thibaut Courtois are the only players in this 11 that started the previous match against Tunisia. Uh, Eugensen, wholesale changes for both teams, but uh, I mean, you are heading into a knockout round. Is, is, is the ploy to keep your star players fresh, to keep them injury free? Uh, yeah, that, that could be one of the issues. And uh, leading up to the other stages, I, I feel like he's giving them a chance to feel the atmosphere of the World Cup, how it is. So that players like Dembele, Fellani, Charlie, Yanuzai, Pashoi, mm. they're, all, they're all talented players. Or like he said, many of the players are playing at bigger clubs. Yeah. So yeah, g giving them opportunity to play, have a first game for, right from the start, so that when it leads to that, they can come at any time in the knockout stages. He's talking about Belgium. I just want to talk about England before I get into, into Belgium, because I need to process the information coming my way, all those changes happening. But uh, Belgium, dark horses ahead of this tournament. But England have really impressed us. Gareth Southgate has got this team playing uh, good attacking football. We really like what we've seen. Young, fearless, uh, three lines as they call them. This lineup and this game will tell us a lot about England. Because it's fine when the two teams that he's picked in the first two games, and, and you know, it is mm. you know, obviously his strongest team. They played very well, scoring a lot of goals. Tunisia and Panama. Yeah. He's relative, not relatively, mm. easy opponents without any disrespect. Um, wins, you know, I think we all expected England to win those games anyway, on riding on hope also. Um, and they've talked a lot about Southgate, the camp, how he's done things, etc. So for me personally, this will tell a lot about England to see how the rest of the squad mm. are in this tournament, considering it's going to be their first run-up. Okay, I want to draw your attention, Eugenson, to something we're going to see on our screen. So, it is Kevin De Bruyne's birthday. And uh, Kevin De Bruyne plays for Manchester City. And uh, he's throwing a birthday party. He's invited some of his Man City teammates to his birthday party. He's not playing. I'm not sure how many of those are playing. I think Stones is playing. Delph is playing, yes. So, uh, that just shows the camaraderie between these players. You know, you play day in, day out for your club. Great spirit in Man City as well, but uh, good party at the end, both teams going through. You, you never know, he, he might have thought he would play and he scored two, three goals. Yeah. <laughs> and so there was a party. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm actually very disappointed at the lineups, actually, I would say. Because uh, why I would say is England's mm. defence have not been tested by a bigger team. Mm. No, no, neither has the Belgium's. So leading up to the knockout stages, I would have wanted to see a, a, both the teams play that. Mm. The best teams and test themselves before they, you know, before they go to the knockout stage yeah. and actually see what is mm. the strengths and the weaknesses. What is the mood in the camp when Harry Kane is not playing, Rukaku isn't playing, both in the race, both want to win the golden boot. Managers have to also keep the egos down a bit. Yeah, I think for Harry Kane, he would probably uh, be glad that Lukaku also is not playing. Mm. You know, so he's not, and, he, and it's probably just a two-way, two-way, you know, they're positive about the fact that both are not playing. <laughs> I think if Harry Kane was playing and Lukaku wasn't, Lukaku mm. would be raging. <laughs> Harry yeah. Kane would be fine. So I, I think, you know, I'd be disappointed maybe if I was playing, you know, because you'd think no, it's think a chance to get more goals, but it's also a tough game. You would be disappointed, I would say, I would want to play every game in the World Cup mm. and mm. being left out for no reason, you know, you... I, th I like Uruguay's approach. I like their approach because Uruguay actually have played the same team 
Suarez Cavani up top. Now, while researching for this game, we came across an interesting kind of a comparison. We're going to show that to you on the screen and uh, tell me what do you make of it because, okay, in 1966 when England won the World Cup, Real Madrid were European champions. This year, who won? Real Madrid. Who won the league? Man City. Man City. What was Chelsea's position in the league? Fifth. Burnley played in Europe that year. They have gone to Europe this year as well. Who won the World Cup? England. Who wins the World Cup this year with so many teams going up and down? The omens are there, Matty. You may not be a happy man on July 15th. Oh, it's a bad year, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad, it'd be a bad year for a Welshman. Um, no. Well, coincidences. You know, people talking about Paul the octopus, bears, cats and all sorts of animals predicting stuff. What about this? Listen, it happens. You know, it's, it's not the first time that these football stories and you know, however you want to describe them, fairy tales, the romanticism, mm. the cliches, the, you know, the things that have happened in the past, the omens, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, Germany are out, mm. so every single team, they should all be thinking they've got a chance now. Yeah. You know, who are they going to fear? Brazil? Yeah. May they probably We'll be fear. happy that Germany aren't around to play in the second round. Many of them, so, so you know, I'm sure it can happen. Okay, uh, also, Talking about this match, uh, if you win the match, usually you get a favourable draw in the next round. Not happening here. Not happening in this because the team which comes second may ha will have to negotiate Colombia, but then it starts to get a bit easy as well. So, I was surprised with those changes because of that. But what do you expect? Going to be a, a bit of a high, high scoring affair with so many changes or do you think that uh, with so many changes, it's going to fizzle out? I, I, f I feel that every player that's going to come on the pitch would give their best knowing that it is an opportunity for them to fight for a place in the squad. So everyone's going to give their best and fight. Let's see who, who makes it. Uh, as either Belgium team or the English team, the players in the squad will really do their best.